Welcome to our lecture online. If you look at the Schrodinger equation of the harmonic oscillator like this, you have a hard time imagining what that wave function could possibly look like. However, when we write the equation like this, it makes it a whole lot easier because then you realize there is a sine and a cosine relationship between the wave function and the second derivative of the wave function as long as this quantity right here, alpha squared, is indeed a positive quantity, which we know it is since the total energy is always greater than or equal to the potential energy of the oscillator. And then since you're hemmed in by the amplitude of the oscillation, of course that would be at a quantum mechanic level, so the amplitudes will vary depending upon the total energy of the oscillator for the various energy states or quantum states, n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2 and so forth. The greater the quantum state, the greater the amplitude of the oscillation. But then when you try to draw or try to think of what that function may look like, even if you don't have an idea of exactly what it should look like, there are certain conditions that must be uh, met. One of them is that you have to asymptotically reach the x-axis on the left side and the right side of the vertical axis, which represents the wave function versus the position x. Secondly, you'll have more oscillations on the wave function as you have greater quantum states. And so then, of course, when you calculate the probability of the wave function, you square the wave function, and then everything becomes positive. So this lobe down here becomes positive. This lobe right here becomes positive. So you have three lobes here. You have two lobes here. You have one lobe here on the function representing the probability density function. So the wave function really has only one way in which you can draw it for the various energy states. Then if you then check out the differential equation and you solve for it, then indeed you say, oh yes, I can see where that equation came from. But even if you don't solve the differential equation, the form or the shape of the, of the, of the wave function, well, there really isn't any choice but to draw the way we've drawn it here. On the quantum state, this is the sim most simplistic way in which you can draw a wave function that asymptotically reaches the x-axis on both sides. If you then go to the next energy level, the only way to do that is to have two lobes instead of one, one going down, one going up. The next state would be two up, one down. The next state would be two up, two down. The next state would be three up, two down, and so forth. So you can see that it becomes quite obvious what the wave function will look like even without solving the differential equation. Solving the differential equation just will, will uh, confirm that yes, your guess, your initial estimate that this was the only way to draw the function is indeed true. And those are therefore good representations of the wave functions of the simple harmonic oscillator. That's how we know.